This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by the Dragon's Shirt, which poses the most important reply to any statement or observation. What about dragons? This is my house. Ah, but what about dragons? Oh, so you want me to marry you? But what about dragons? Will you please pass the salt? But what about dragons? Dragons have feelings too, people. We cannot forget the dragons. Available on Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowverses. Greetings, I'm Shad, and this is the companion video to the one that I've just made previously addressing the benefits of LARP in regards to sword fighting. Uh, this video I'm going to be talking about the, uh, the problems, the detriments that I feel exist in LARP that are not good in learning how to sword fight, so it's balanced, fair and even on both sides. Having said that, even though I'm going to be sharing some of the issues that I've observed that exist in LARP, uh, I want to say I do not like the LARP bashing bandwagon. And I hope you've watched the previous video uh, before watching this one, so if not, pause, please do go watch the other one, because I talk about how people bash on LARP, phone webs, all that stuff. No, and, and this is not an attempt to do so either. When I mention these things that I feel are problems, and it's only problems in regards to sword fighting, so I'm not talking about the awesome fun about the live action role playing side of things, I'm talking about learning how to sword fight. And when I mention those problems, they are not to discount the benefits that I've mentioned in my other video, or to say that I think LARP is useless like some people try and propose in the world. The next thing that I want to mention is that uh, these issues that I say are uh, casual observa observations of LARP as a whole. So there are some cases where my criticisms will not apply to certain LARP groups or even a LARP group that I attend, okay? This is a more broad criticism that can apply and not apply depending on the group because LARP changes between groups. I've also looked at LARP outside of the, my local group and, uh, you know, other areas see how they do it. So the things I say will not be entirely representative. I just want you to understand that. So the first thing that uh, rubs me the wrong way that I don't like about LARP and I uh, feel it's detrimental, uh, it seems that generally LARP does not understand the concept of armor. Now it doesn't seem like LARP is the only, uh, you know, a hobby, sword fighting medieval kind of hobby thing that doesn't understand this. Uh, the SCA, they have a lot of kind of sparring in there as well, or mock fighting, and uh, it seems to be that they uh, have the same issue in a general sense. The same with something like Battle of Nations, and so this applies to some other things as well, and it's that they don't really understand what armor is, how it functioned, and what it's supposed to do. In LARP, you generally get hit points, and whatever hit you, you know, land on an opponent, uh, hit, it's like role playing. You, you know, you take a hit point off, and then when all your hit points are gone, you're dead. And any contact is counted, which is, which is weird because they love armor in LARP, and that's one of the things I love about LARP is the, you know the, the outfits and the you know, the way you get to dress up. It's heaps of fun, and some art, sometimes the armor that people you know end up wearing looks pretty darn cool and ends up being quite accurate historically, but not in all cases. More often than not, it's not accurate, I'll just say that. And what they do, they grant additional hit points uh, for the more armor you wear, where in reality, that's not how things function. That's not how armor function in reality. Armor was made to stop blows completely. It would be so easy to incorporate, and it's simply this. Any, uh, if you, if a, someone is wearing armor in LARP and a hit lands on the armored part, the hit doesn't count. Uh, but what if the hit can go through the armor? I mean, you do know what armor was meant to be. First of all, metal, no, okay? All right, unless it's like a full-on couched lance strike from on horseback, it's not going to pierce plate armor. Swords cannot chop through steel armor, like, unless it's like tin-plated dirt, but no, you, you generally people who, you know, look for armor wanted quality, unless they were dirt poor, but then they would try and find second-hand pieces of armor, because there was a lot of second-hand armor existing, that was still good quality. No, okay, it's so exceptional for a sword strike or something like that to actually, you know, get through uh, plate armor, you are far better off just saying it's impossible. What about Mail and Gamerson? Because there are more, far more examples of uh, certain types of weapons getting through that type of armor. Well, look, if you want, you can try and, you know, uh, 
complicate it a little bit by saying certain weapon types can't get certain get through certain things. So if you're wearing mail or the equivalent, you know, mail because uh, there's a lot of fake mail uh, in LARP and stuff like that, you can say slashing weapons can't get through it. Piercing does half hit point damage. Look and look, it's funny. Uh, you might think that's complicated to keep track of. It's already complicated when you have 12 hit points, but it's like two hit points distracted if it's from you know the torso and one hit points on the limbs and everything like that. Keeping track of the numbers while in the middle of fighting is already hard enough. So I don't think it's going to be over complicate things. Just say it's only a half hit point hit if it's a slash on mail or something like that. Sorry, piercing in mail. Piercing. Slashing should be disregarded completely. But having said that, people probably don't understand how exceptional it was for thrusts to get through mail as well. Because there was also, you know, a padded type of garment underneath, generally not as thick as when you just wore gambeson without anything else. But still, it's an additional layer that you'd have to penetrate. And it's amazing how effectively mail with this padding underneath can be at stopping thrusts as well. So in my opinion, what I really think is that any hit on armor, including mail, stuff like that, should be disregarded because a hit to go through that type of armor was more the exception than the norm in regards to medieval combat. And this includes Gambeson. People think, uh, I. Gambeson is just treated as nothing in video games, also movies and stuff, and, uh, well, you know, it gives additional hit points. But so many of the types of hits that land on Gambeson would do nothing and wouldn't get through the layers at all. Gambeson was remarkably effective at protecting people. That's why so many people wore it. So then how, you know, do you get strikes uh, in armor and stuff? Well, it would change the way people would have to fight then, wouldn't it? Which is what the whole point of armor was. And so, uh, like, if someone was wearing full plate, uh, they could actually fight the way people, you know, more often would have fought in full plate in LARP. In LARP, you've got to protect your whole body and you basically have to fight as if you're not wearing the armor. But if the armor actually, you know, uh, protected you properly, where hits could not get through it, and so you didn't need even... Because what's funny, generally what'll happen in LARP is that there are some cases where I have seen people fight what, the way you would have an armor, which uh, <laughs> there are variants, because one of the ways you can fight an armor is to disregard your own defense, because the armor's protecting you, rush in and just hit the person and kill them. And yeah, they hit you, but it... I have so many hit points it doesn't care, and that's how it applies in LARP. But in actual, you know, combat, is like, they hit you and it bounced off. But there's a limit, of course, to how much you could do that in LARP, because every hit does, you know, subtract your hit points. In any regard, I really do think uh, that that should be a rule adopted in uh, LARP more predominantly. It should make it more interesting, more realistic, and, you know, sophisticated in terms of fighting, is to not count hits that land on armor at all, including Gambeson and Mail. And if you did want to say, no, no, hits must be counted, uh, you know, only certain types of hits. So male, completely immune to slashes and cuts. And then with male and Gambeson, perhaps only counting hits that uh, have enough force. But this is the other issue, the oversensitive nature they have in regards to safety. Look, I could be wrong about this. This is very much my own personal opinion and preference because whenever I've sparred, I have had no problem pe with people, you know, being aggressive in their fighting because it's more realistic and uh, it encourages you to actually fight better as well. But you're not allowed to hit at a certain, you know, uh, hardness with LARP. Now I think, look, that perhaps is a good rule with people wear, not re really wearing armor, but when you have people wearing armor, especially like my Gambeson or plate mail, that should be thrown out. Hit as hard as you want. You're not gonna do anything with these foam swords. I mean, I think there you have a chance to hurt someone if you went full swing and hit them in the head with a foam sword with no protection at all. That would sting. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to try and injure someone. It's possible if you really, you know, you know, dedicated yourself to injuring someone with a LARP weapon. I'm sure you'd be able to. But my goodness, they are made to be safe, all right? And so once you have armor in the mix and everything like that, absolutely hit as hard as you want. And then, you know, with regards to gamers and stuff like that, only consider counting the hit if it had some proper force behind it. Because the other issue with LARP is that uh, they... There's no uh, kind of attention given to how hard the strikes were, you know, were, or if the edge alignment was even, you know, uh, correct. Because if you hit with the flat of the blade, it's still a hit. 
hit point lost or whatever, even if it was the slightest little tap. And so unfortunately, LARP fighting can degenerate into kind of sword tag, if uh, you know what I mean when I say that. It was just like, tap, hey, I got you, run, run, tap. And then and another thing with LARP is that the, the tap, 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 they'll go tap, 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 tap. When in reality, if this was like, say, real, and they did tap, tap, tap on the back of an armored person, that would have just been that, a tap. Nothing would have been done at all. Though there are some LARP, you know, groups, like my own for instance, that don't count the tap tap taps. They have to be, at least look like a solid swing. They're not allowed to be too hard, but at least it has to look like a solid swing to count, so that's good. I just think it should be taken a step further. Uh, the next thing, headshots. Uh, th th this is probably uh, the, the biggest issue I have with LARP in re regards to learning how to sword fight. Headshots are not allowed. Again, uh, it's the uh, the focus they have on safety, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but for my own tastes, uh, I love headshots. <laughs> That is, of course, coming from my HEMA training because the head is the primary tie. If you can hit any part on the body, it's the head you want to hit because the smallest hit on the head can fully incapacitate your opponent. Of course, you, you hit anywhere you can. If you can get them in the hands, that will incapacitate them as well. Oh my goodness, hitting on the head is the most deadly part to hit someone. And again, that probably is the reason why they don't allow it. Still, with the LARP weapons being so safe, uh, like I think a, a slight tap on the head should be perfectly fine. And when you're actually wearing helmets, full guy uh, smack as hard as you can. It's not going to hurt at all if you're wearing a helmet. Because uh, when people try and learn how to fight in LARP and uh, they do not train to head hit at all, that it affects their fighting style massively because one, they are discounting one of the most valuable area targets to hit in combat, but they also learn to not protect their own head. Like if you ever really fought someone in LARP, okay, and uh, you know, you decide to go for the head, it's amazing how easy it is because they don't protect it. Like, like LARP has a lot of shields. They love shields in LARP. And so you'll see them holding the shield and they rarely ever raise it to protect their head because they don't need to because it's an illegal target area. So of course that is going to really affect the sword fighting styles that people will develop in LARP uh, to a very big detriment. And in my opinion, as I've already mentioned, I really don't think there's any harm at all in allowing headshots to certain extents. You know, you can still be mindful of safety, but like I, with helmets, should be perfectly fine. So these are, in my opinion, the detriments in regards to using LARP to learn how to fight effectively with swords and stuff. But to not just leave my opinion as well, I'm going to bring Oz back as well to share what his uh, primary uh, detriment or problem that he sees with LARP in regards to learning how to fight properly with swords. Hey Chad, um, nice to see you again. That too is a very interesting question. Um, now. I think that there are one or two disadvantages to, to LARP fighters within HEMA. Um, I think in general the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, but because, because of the way LARP works and the fact that safety is absolutely paramount, and because it draws people from all sorts of different backgrounds and people that have different goals for, for LARP, there's a huge amount of focusing on safety and that's not a bad thing to a degree i think we could do with more of that in hema but what that means is that the weapons become a little bit big and soft and, and to a degree flappy and it means that that some of the techniques that we would use within larp sorry within hema aren't really acceptable within larp but more than that I think because of the way the fighting tends to take place and the way the scoring tends to work, it becomes, or at least it risks becoming, a bit like sword tag. And LARP fighters tend to be very fast and very accurate and their distance measurement is good and their judgment is good and their timing is very good. Their edge alignment tends to suck. Um, and if there's anything that I work with more with LARP guys than non-LARP guys, it's trying to get them to remember that swords have flats and swords have edges. And unless you're hitting, hitting someone with the edge, you're not going to cut. Um, now, in general, a little bit of test cutting with sharp swords tends to resolve that pretty quickly. But I think that because 
within a LARP fight, a touch is a hit. It's very easy to, to bring that across into HEMA. And I think that's, that's probably the biggest downfall most LARP fighters have. And when they get past that, and invariably they can, because they're pretty skilled and because they practice a lot, uh, when they get past it, they do tend to become very good swordsmen. One of the greatest swordsmen that I, I, I know um, is, is a LARP fighter. He's not really studied HEMA in any great degree. Um, he competes in LARP and in HEMA, and he's won all sorts of tournaments and, and cups. Um, I came second to him in a tournament a little while ago, which was, was just really irritating. Thankfully, I beat him at the next tournament we were in. Uh, but, you know, so be it. But he's, he's really good, and he's a LARP fighter, and he's got this, this edge control and edge alignment down pat. So that's probably the biggest problem I see within HEMA sword fighting that stems from LARP. I hope that's answered your question, and um, uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. Take care, mate. Thanks, mate. And, and of course, yeah, absolutely, I agree with uh, Martin completely. So I would love it, really, if uh, anybody, LARP organizer people, whatever, who sees this video, they might consider some of the criticisms that I've shared and uh, see if you might be able to incorporate to improve your experience and make LARP even more viable as a means to actually learn how to fight with a sword because I think it has so much potential. There's so much awesome stuff about it. So there you go. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed, and I do hope to see you again. Until that time, farewell.